you know a handful of people who absolutely love sitting down to watch the soccer or playing their own game of gully cricket. Sports have been around for thousands of years and to survive that long, there certainly needs to be something in it that people want to join in with. Even today, every morning when I'm tying my shoelaces, I invariably get nostalgic thinking of days back at school when I just used to get up, get dressed and show up. I started playing tennis when I was 8 years old. It was just another summer hobby for me. On court, I would meditate, run for a drop shot like there's no tomorrow, let out a roar or just surprise everyone with my childlike enthusiasm to chase an impossible ball. That 8 year old lad could run, jump, create angles on the court and most importantly just be mighty happy. But that's not the case with the competitive or modern sports which demand so much perfection of body, so much strength of mind and so much spirit of teamwork that the end product blurs the dividing line between leisure and professional development. Sports compete for cultural space with communions and congregations because they are all about the elevation of your body, mind and soul. And never once does it violate basic values of fair play and sportsmanship. Great merit is attached to being a decent loser. Much like a country's educational system, media or political and social movement, sporting events bring disparate people together by strengthening ties and celebrating common ideas of fairness, sacrifice and hope. Hello dear readers and welcome back to Vidharva Literary Festival. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here with us on a Monday evening for a change. My name is Vismay Raut and I feel extremely happy to be your host for this session. A little request to all the readers, please keep your phones on silent while the session is going on. As you know, at VLF, we have a special segment to showcase books written by our local Vidharba authors. This gives you, our reader, a unique opportunity to get associated and give your kind support to encourage our local writers community. Today's author is Vijaya Marotkar, an award-winning teacher, popular poet, writer and columnist. Let's meet this multifaceted woman who feels her real purpose in life is to be a mother to all the girls out there and caution them about the pitfalls that they will encounter in their path of life, the care and caution they must take to come out unscathed and achieve their real goals. Let's hear it from the author herself. Please welcome Mrs. Vijaya Marotka with her book, Pori Zara Zapun. Sarvana Namaskar, Maharashtra Trahate Marathit Bolin. Ubi Sankate Thave Cha Thave, Tari Zunza Dili Tupana Save, Kiti Da Ithe Zahala Chindhada, Tari Tine, Roses, Dava Takali, Nave Nave, Takranthu Juti Savitri, Fulana Vinamra Vivadan Karte, Tichamwe Azia Maikur, Apna Sarvan Parintami Yon Pochli. जास्त वेळ घेणार नाही आयोजकांची खूप खूप आभार सुरुवातीलाच मानते आणि एका इतक्या सुंदर पार्श्वभूमीवर अभिजित कुळकर्णींच्या मला एक विदर्भ लेखिका म्हणून इथे उभं राहण्याचा आपण बहुमान दिला त्याबद्दल आपले आभार पोरी जरा जपून या माझ्या पुस्तकाबद्दल मी सांगावं असं मला आयोजकांनी सांगितलं गेलं खरं तर आजपर्यंत विविध क्षेत्रात विविधांगी मराठीमध्ये मी लेखन केलं गेलं सर्वच लेखक ज्याप्रमाणे कवितेपासून सुरुवात करतात तशीच माझीही कवितेशीच सर्वात आधी भेट झाली कविता भेटता भेटता पुढे कथा कविता आणि नंतर बाकी लेखन होत राहिलं नागपूरच्या जवळपास सर्वच वर्तमानपत्रांनी मला स्तंभलेखन दिलं स्तंभलेखनादरम्यान विविध स्त्रियांची प्रश्न नव्हे तर सामाजिक प्रश्नांवरही मी लेखन करत गेले आणि नंतर तर त्याची विविधांगी पुस्तकं येत गेलीत त्यामुळे आज माझी कथा कविता वैचारिक लेखन चरित्र लेखन अशी पस्तीस पुस्तकं आहेत परंतु केवळ लेखकांना लिहत जायचं आणि कशाकरता तर स्वांत सुख आहे हे मनाला कुठेतरी पटत नव्हतं काहीतरी आपल्याकडून मुद्दाम असं ठोस लेखन झालं पाहिजे की ज्याचा समाजाला उपयोग होईल आणि मुलं महिलांकरता मुलींकरता काम करताना मी एका महाविद्यालयामध्ये प्राध्यापिका मला स्वतःला मुलगी नाही पण माझ्या अवतीभोवती चिवचिवणाऱ्या आणि फुलपाखरासारख्या बागडणाऱ्या मुलींच्या आयुष्यात मागील दहा पंधरा वर्षांपासून जो मोबाईल नावाचं इन्स्ट्रुमेंट आलं खरं तर किती चांगलं आहे ना किती त्याचा उपयोग आहे मी प्रथमतः आज इथे भेटते केवळ त्याच्यामुळेच परंतु त्याचा उपयोग कसा करावा याची सावधता नसल्यामुळे आमच्या बेसावद वळणावरच्या मिडल क्लास फॅमिलीतनं आमच्याकडे येणाऱ्या मुली उद्ध्वस्त होताना जेव्हा पाहिलं त्यावेळेला एक माझ्यातली स्त्री एक आई एक बाई 
अक्षरशः हादरून गेली आणि काय करावं काय करू नये या विचारात पडली परंतु असं म्हणतात ना जहा चाह वहा राह असं काहीतरी झालं माझ्या बाबतीत एक घटना घडली ती सांगणार नाही कारण ती या माझ्या कथासंग्रहाचा पहिला भाग ती कथा झाली आणि मी या वाटेवर निघाली तुम्ही जरूर ती वाचावी अशी माझी अपेक्षा असेल या वाटेवर ती काम करत असताना अचानक एक अशी दुर्दैवी घटना घडली की माझ्या वर्गातली एक शीतल नावाची मुलगी माझा मराठीत लेखन केलं असेल तर बेसिकली मी कॉमर्स स्टुडंट आणि कॉमर्स लेक्चरर राहिली आहे माझ्या महाविद्यालयात मी कॉस्ट अकाउंट ॲडव्हान्स अकाउंट शिकवत राहिली तर माझ्या बाराव्या वर्गातली मुलगी जेव्हा अकरावीतनं बारावीत आली तर ती उदाहरणं म्हणजे प्रॉ प्रॅक्टिकल छोटे छोटे चुकवायला लागली मला वाटलं हिला झालं काय मागच्या वर्षीची एवढी माझी फु फुलपाखरासारखी भिरभिरणारी शीतल बारावीत येता येता एवढी शांत कशी काय झाली अर्थात शिक्षकांना जास्त आईवडिलांपेक्षा कळत असतं तिच्यापर्यंत पोहोचण्याचा प्रयास केला काही विषय हाती लागला नाही माझ्यातली तगमग मला स्वस्त बसू देत नव्हती एक दिवस सगळे निघून गेले तिला थांबवलं म्हटलं मला तुझ्याशी बोलायचं आहे बराच तिचा शहनिशा घेतला तिने ताकाला तूर म्हणतात ते म्हण आहे मराठीत काहीच हाती लागू दिलं नाही आणि नंतर मात्र म्हटलं चला आता संध्याकाळ व्हायला लागलेली आता इथंच राहायचं का बघ जाऊया घरी पण शीतल मला त्याचं नाव सांग असं म्हणताच मॅडम तुम्हाला कसं कळलं ॲक्च्युली मला काहीच माहिती नव्हतं मी असाच बाण सोडला पण लागला बसली खूप रडली रडू दिलं जवळ घेतलं मॅडम खरंच असं काय बाय घडलं मोबाईलमुळे परंतु आता मात्र मी कुठंच नाही मी सावरलेली पण मॅडम तुम्हाला खरं सांगू का आज अख्खं घर माझ्या जीवावर उठलं हो आणि सकाळी उठताना लात आणि बसताना बुक्की असं सगळं असतं आणि मला रोजच वाटतं की आत्महत्या करून टाकावी मग मी तिला जवळ घेतलं खूप रडली रडू दिलं आणि तिला म्हटलं बेटा शीतल हा तुझा एकटीचा प्रश्न नाही हे सगळ्या तुझ्यासारख्या कितीतरी शीतलचा हा प्रश्न आहे ती घरी गेली मी घरी गेली मी विचार करू लागले की मी काय करू शकते त्या विचारांनी मला बेचैन करून टाकलं माझे मिस्टर दोन हजार अकराला आम्हाला सोडून गेलेले घरी मी एकटीच दोन्ही मुलं दोन दिशांना शिकायला गेलेले ते शीतलच्या विचारांनी मला अस्वस्थ केलेलं परंतु असं झालं की घटना घडली आणि चौथ्या दिवशी मी तिच्या घरी माझी एकटीवा घेऊन पोचली संध्याकाळी तिच्या त्या वस्तीमध्ये म्हणजे ते आम्ही मी न्यू इंग्लिश ज्युनियर कॉलेजला आमच्याकडे येणारी सगळे ज्या मंगळवार बुधवार एरियातली मुलं तर ते आमचे स्टुडंटही होते अनेक मारोजकर मॅडम आल्या मॅडम आल्या कोणाकडे आल्या कोणाकडे आल्या शीतलकडेच आल्या असाव्यात त्यांचा कयास तिच्या दारापुढे जशी गाडी लावली तिची बहीण खूप आरडाओरडा करायला लागली बापरे आता कॉलेजपर्यंत बदनामी झाली वाटते आता काय करायचं मी तिच्या बहिणीला म्हटलं बेटा शांत हो आईला भेटायला आली ते घराला मी शांत केलं आई आई असते रडल्या पडल्या म्हटलं ताई मला काही सांगू नका मला एकाच प्रश्नाचं उत्तर हवं आहे की तुम्ही या मुलीला जन्माला घातलं घडू नये ते घडलं ही रोज मरायच्या गोष्टी करते मग हिनं मरून जावं का मला मुलगी नाही मी हिला न्यायला आली हिचं सामान पॅक करा तुमचे शीतल मी तुम्हाला कधी परत करणार नाही काहीतरी बनेन ना आपल्या लाईफमध्ये तेव्हा कारण आम्ही शिक्षक आहो ना आम्हाला जास्त कळतं आमची मुलं कशी आहेत तुमच्यापेक्षा आई असते तिने म्हटलं नाही मॅडम असे काही होणार नाही तुम्ही शांत राहात मी म्हटलं मग मला माझी मागच्या वर्षीची शीतल परत पाहिजे ही तुमची आहे वापस घ्या मला नको आहे हो म्हटल्या प्रॉमिस केलं मी आली मी रोज तिच्याकडे बघायची हिच्यात काही बदल झाला आहे का सतरा दिवस असे अप अँड डाऊन्समध्ये गेले मला कधी वाटायचं ठीक आहे कधी वाटायचं नाही काहीतरी बिघडलं बंधू भगिनींना आपणाला सांगताना मला खूप वाईट वाटतं की माझ्या शीतलनं सतराव्या दिवशी सुसाईड केलं बारा एक वाजले ती आलीच नाही का तर तिने आत्महत्या केल्याचीच बातमी हा अपडेट टाकून तशीच घरी आली खूप रडली खूप विचार केला म्हटलं विजया तुझ्या साहित्य लेखनाला काही अर्थ नाही एक मुलगी वाचू शकत नाही बेकार आहे सगळं आणि माझ्याकडनं एक कथात्मक काव्य लिहिलं गेलं जसं शीतल माझ्या संचारली हा मोबाईल हाती आल्यापासून तर उद्ध्वस्त होतपर्यंत आणि ती तिच्या मैत्रिणींना सांगू इच्छिते की माझ्या बाबतीत जे घडलं ते तुमच्या बाबतीत घडू नये हे माझ्याकडनं एक कथा काव्य लिहिल्या गेलं माझ्या एका मैत्रिणीला ऐकवलं माझी मैत्रिणी एका महाविद्यालयात मराठी विभाग प्रमुख ती म्हटली अगं विजय ही कविता मला ऐकून काही उपयोग नाही ही माझ्या स्टुडंटला ऐकवूया आणि त्या साईनाथ महाविद्यालयात तिनं माझा पहिला कार्यक्रम घेतला आता कार्यक्रम करायचं म्हणजे त्याला शीर्षक हवं आम्ही दोघींनी मिळून हे शीर्षक ठरलं त्याच दिवशी पोरी जरा जपून आणि बंधू भगिनीनं माझा हा प्रवास सुरू झाला सगळ्या वर्तमानपत्रात बातम्या आल्या सगळ्यांना हा विषय हवा होता आणि तो विषय पुढे पुढे जात गेला नंबर ऑफ प्रोग्राम वाढवणे माझा अजिबात उद्देश नव्हता नाही आणि नसेन पण पण आज मात्र माझ्या लाईफचं मिशन झालं आहे तीनशे पंधरा कार्यक्रम झालेत उभा महाराष्ट्र पालथा घालत असते कोल्हापूरला कार्यक्रम झाला असताना मला एका प्रकाशकाने विनंती केली की मॅडम तुम्ही येता आणि निघून जाता तुम्ही काहीतरी या मुलींना देऊन जा त्यावेळेला त्यांच्या विनंतीवरून हे माझं पुस्तक लिहिलं गेलं पोरी जरा जपून यामध्ये मोबाईलमुळे उद्ध्वस्त झालेल्या खऱ्या खुऱ्या मुलींच्या खऱ्या खुऱ्या कथा आहेत आज प्रत्येक आई आणि जिथे जिथे मी प्रोग्रामला जाते ते आयोजक मुलींना म्हणतात बेटा 
अडीचशे तीनशे रुपयाचा मोबाईल रिचार्ज करण्यापेक्षा हे पुस्तक विकत घ्या लाईफ रिचार्ज होऊन जाईल बरंच काही पुस्तकात बोलण्यासारखं आहे पण वाचकाने ते वाचावं अशी आपणच विनंती करते आयोजकांनी संधी दिली याबद्दल त्यांचे आभार मानते आणि थांबते धन्यवाद थँक्यू सो मच विजया जी फॉर प्रेझेंटिंग युअर बुक टू अस अँड वी विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर युअर फ्युचर As the Indian badminton squad clinched the Thomas Cup for the first time in history, fans across the world were stunned. Beating 14-time champions Indonesia was a monumental feat achieved by the Indian men's team. 43 years after its loss to Denmark in the semi-final, it also tells us how far the sport has come, being one of the most popular in India and now only next to cricket. The last decade saw a definitive transformation in Indian badminton. a decade where gopi chand moved into coaching with his eponymous academy in hyderabad and where a band of ace shuttlers like saina nehwal pv sindhu kidambi shrikant b sai pranit and a host of others who have excelled on world stage emerged out but how did all this happen how did india break the shackles of mediocrity and become a champion nation was it a national coach pulela gopin chand and his method of teaching that is making such a difference and what about him being labeled as a strict disciplinarian a treasure trove of information anecdotes and trivia for all the badminton players and even aficionados like me the gopi chand factor chronicles indian badminton through the ages and encapsulates distant and contemporary history of the sport in india shaped by gopi chand two day sweet let's explore this book that leaves you intrigued about the subject and wanting to know more Dear readers, allow me to introduce our moderator for today, Ace Shuttler and pride of Oran City, Ms. Arundhati Pantavne, former India number no. one in women's single, who is currently coaching junior players under Gopi Chand at the Gopi Chand Badminton Academy, Hyderabad. She represented India at the women's team event of the 2010 Asian Games and clinched gold medal in Bahrain International Challenge, silver in Czech Republic, bronze in Polish Open, to name a few. She has a career best world ranking of 40 and how can one forget how great conversationalist she is with me being personally obsessed with her YouTube channel Arundhati Arun vlog we are more than elated to have you with us and now without further ado let's meet the man who has closely followed the new energy in this early years and has delved deep into the heart of it to write the blood sweat and tears that have gone into this unprecedented success story Mr Abhijit Kulkarni is an athlete communications expert talent scout and an ardent sports enthusiast his experience as sports journalist and shuttler has provided him with a brilliantly detailed perspective of the badminton arena after years of identifying scrutinizing and nurturing talent at the grassroots level and observing what drives this game and understanding the paradigm shift in the scene of indian badminton he brings us all a tell all book which is nothing but a must have experience for anyone who has a fondness to the sport i would request arundhati to escort our author on stage and take the session forward let's welcome them with a huge round of applause good evening everybody and uh, abhijit dada i call him dada <laughs> congratulations for your book and Thank you. uh, well we go long back uh, when i used to play and he used to be the sports journalist and uh, uh, he used to ask a lot of questions during his sports journalism and now i'm at the uh, the roles have reversed and <laughs> you are at the end of the question so before uh, starting to discuss about your book uh, we would like to know about uh, how was uh, you when your uh, college days you know younger how you as a person when uh, during your college days today we are speaking here about sports and how great it is to be a sports person i think uh, during my school and college days the only thing i have heard from everybody i knew was दिन भर खेलते रहता है इससे इससे लाइफ में कुछ नहीं होगा एंड देर देर वॉज इन फैक्ट देर वॉज अ ग्रुप ऑफ माई रिलेटिव हु केम टू माई हाउस टू एक्सप्लेन टू माई पेरेंट्स कि इसको खेलना बंद कराओ नहीं तो ये दसवीं भी पास नहीं होगा बट टूडे थैंक्स टू माई पेरेंट्स आई स्टेड विथ स्पोर्ट्स एंड नाउ कैन क्लेम दैट एक्चुअली स्पोर्ट्स इज वॉट हैज गिवन विद आइडेंटिटी दैट आई हैव दो आई डेंट बिकम अ big sports person ever as you said uh, here you uh, were writing about politics before uh, then so what made you choose sport and especially badminton so it was not a choose sport as such uh, what happened was that when i started journalism i think i became a journalist by accident 
सो आई एम ग्रेजुएट इन केमिस्ट्री एंड अ मास्टर्स इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस बट आई बिकेम अ जर्नलिस्ट बिकॉज आई स्टार्टेड राइटिंग अ ट्रैवलॉग आई ड्यूरिंग माई कॉलेज डेज आई हैड दिस हैबिट ऑफ ट्रैवलिंग अक्रॉस इंडिया टू अंडरस्टैंड अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स सो आई स्पेंड अबाउट वन एंड हाफ मंथ्स इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द टेररिस्ट आस्पेक्ट ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट वेन टू द उल्फा कैम्स एंड ऑल दैट एंड देन आई केम बैक एंड देर वॉज अ फ्रेंड हु वॉज वर्किंग इन देशदूत हु आस्ट मी टू राइट अ कपल ऑफ कॉलम्स एंड दैट इज हाउ आई बिकेम अ जर्नलिस्ट सो एवरीबडी प्रॉबली थॉट दैट आई वॉज गुड विथ पॉलिटिक्स सो इन पी टी आई आई यूज टू कवर दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट एंड टू थाउजेंड फोर एथन गेम्स पी टी आई बींग अ न्यूज एजेंसी दे नीडेड समबडी हू अंडरस्टूड अ लॉट मोर स्पोर्ट्स बिकॉज यू हैव टू बिकॉज एट टाइम इंडिया नेवर यूज टू सेंड जर्नलिस्ट टू कवर दीज मेजर इवेंट्स एंड दी एजेंसीज वुड हैव टू मेक सेंस ऑफ द रिजल्ट एंड राइट कॉपीज एंड इट्स सो हैपन दैट दे अंडरस्टूड दैट आई अंडरस्टूड मोस्ट ऑफ द स्पोर्ट्स and so they asked me to help on the sports desk because till then i used to cover politics go and watch sports play for the media team but never cover sports so 2004 athens olympics they said okay you are the only one who can make sense of what is what is the difference in weightlifting and wrestling so please sit on the desk and ensure that every copy is cleaned and sent that is how i became a sport journalist again and why badminton specially i am born and brought up in a railway colony where you get to play a lot of sports and badminton i used to play the other sports i used to play and i remember when i first went to cover a badminton event i was the only journalist rather i think you would have remembered that half the senior nationals i used to be the only journalist who used to be with most of you and i liked that sport i enjoyed that sport uh, I, like when sayed modi died in 88 i think i was just 11 years old but i still remember that news okay. so in a way i was very passionate about the sport and i used to like badminton and let uh, frankly as a journalist at that time most of the sports in this country never welcome journalists okay for a reason the way the events like you played and the way events were organized they were be so mis- mishandled that they never like journalists coming and covering the sport on the venue and uh, so in a way i think badminton was gopi had just won in 2001 badminton was picking up and because i was interested i was allowed to go because nobody used to go so from 2004 to 2006 i was still covering politics and covering sports so i chose not to do cricket then because you needed to be a full time journalist so i picked a couple of sports it's not just badminton i covered shooting q sports but slowly slowly badminton became the main because it grew so much yes. that automatically i was sucked into it more great so uh what exactly made you write this book and uh, why gopichand and now uh, what is the purpose of this book there are couple of things like it was not i i did not start thinking i will write about gopichand uh, over the years because of my involvement in sports and because of my experience of sports i always felt that there was a missing link in why we never became bigger sports persons then when i started working with lakshya and actually worked with some of the players who are now olympians on their grassroots development i saw a lot of hassles the in the planning in the way you approach a career and uh, there came a point when i was talking to somebody about indian badminton and i felt that people don't know what the journey of indian badminton is we only know a saina and a sindhu we think winning medal is so easy ki even today people think you lost a match which means you are finished and then i thought it was important to tabulate this journey of the transition of indian badminton somewhere and the editor actually was more enthusiastic than me like i'll be very frank i've been a newspaper journalist who writes a copy in 450 words writing 70000 words was not easy okay but uh, why gopichand so if you have read the book it is not just about gopichand it is it is a journey of indian badminton from it started fr- 
to the challenges that we face but there's a big difference between the other coaches and gopichand whatever said and done if you didn't have a gopichand in 2004 we wouldn't have the growth of badminton it's not like we didn't have coaches before we had a prakash padukone academy but we did not go to that height it was a vision of one man or a drive of one man and automatically if you are j- talking about indian badminton and the journey of indian badminton gopi chand coming into coaching was the turning point so automatically the book had to revolve around gopi chand gopi chand is the hero is a leading actor so okay so uh, as you wrote a uh, lot of things about uh, gopi chand academy so i want to know what is your understanding of gopi chand academy and uh, and why you okay as you mentioned that you not uh, it's not about gopi chand academy but uh, like why uh, you chose this academy over uh, prakash padukone academy like i said uh, the pra- there is a basic difference between a prakash padukone academy and a gopi chand academy and uh, i will like for me uh, the biggest uh, attraction of gopi chand as a coach uh you haven't seen the prakash pakadukon academy era of the 97 98 which was more of finishing school so you became a national champion and then you be- went to the prakash pakadukon academy and prakash sir was very clear that my job is to make you international stars i am not going to handhold you into badminton and to a large extent even when i was playing this was the thing so we went to school we studied there and the parents would take homework the same system was followed in coaching even in a prakash padukone academy you played for two and a half hours you got complete attention for two and a half hours and then people would go home and we don't know what so i don't know whether you know players like uh, bhaiman bora or uh, krishna deka raja who happens to beat saina 110 110 in a junior nationals final these were exceptionally talented players probably more talented than the bunch we have today but bahiman bora would go back to home there was the new craze of playing video games then would keep on playing video games till 2 in the night come back to practice at 9 and was finished by the time he was 21 so if i want to say the basic difference about gopi chand and all other coaching in this country is that gopi chand got involved into everybody's life he i i have used the word control freak he was a control freak so i think arundhati can give you us more examples about how he controlled the life of all these players than so that was so like gopichand got involved in everything he controlled everything because he believed that if you don't control the outside environment you cannot perform on the court and that that is what changed the performance levels of indian players okay i would give the answers but uh, i am not sitting there so not today <laughs> but uh, yeah that uh, in the book and as you said just now that i get a feel in certain parts of your book that uh, you've been critical about gopichand uh, as you said that he involved uh, in the life of player and uh, he's been strict so uh, what is what is it it based on so is it the feedback of a player or is it uh, your uh, or is it just uh, media hearsay i don't think anything is hearsay so you have first hand experience so none of it is hearsay it is probably the analysis is a lot about what i have heard from most of you players what i have spoken to gopi over the years some incidents i did not write because it wouldn't have been right on on the players if i would have written some of those incidents so i have not mentioned a lot of incidents because what players told me off the record as a journalist i'll not write even on the record in a book but uh, i have definitely mentioned some of the incidents where i have spoken to players just as an analysis and i have me- i have used that analysis here instead of writing the exact quotes mm-hmm. but uh, i am very confident that what i have written about him being a control freak is not very wrong and gopi himself 
accepts when he made a one a statement in one of my interviews saying there's no place for democracy if you want to produce champions yes i read that in your book <laughs> but uh, as you said so what is your understanding of gopichand academy so as an academy again uh, it has a, its plus po points it has in minus points so it, it's a well run unit as an academy which should be i won't get i am not critical or i am not very euphoric about the academy as such because when you have 500 people you cannot control all 500 people and uh, i think gopi once told one of the parents uh, when he said yes i am parent for all these kids but again then there would be five of them whom i will be very interest or very focused on because they are performing and i can't help it i cannot give the same kind of focus to 500 people so the minute it was when you started you like i don't know many of you know she was the first outstation student of gopichand academy everybody else before that were from hyderabad and it was it was that batch which gopi was directly involved even i think t ensuring that you ate the exact amount of food he had suggested you are asking me <laughs> or you are telling me <laughs> so both no 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 in a way you answered the question right we are not answering but so that 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 gopichand academy was very different that was a individual driven gopichand today he is trying to create a system driven gopichand academy yeah. they are completely different aspects to the like what gopichand academy was 2006 is not the same in 2022 but the hunger to produce players is still there and i think that is all you can think of or expect from when an organization grows because it is not a one person organization anymore yes it's a team effort all of uh, all of them are work together to make a champion yes perfect uh, uh go we can go, we go back to the book and uh, i read the book and i really love the uh saina era chapter in that maybe because uh, saina is very dear to me and i was present in all uh, that situation um uh, i really like someone said that her wins uh, gave her a gave us a confidence that even we can be top ranked player even when uh, people interviewed me i also said the same things and uh, uh, 100% saina is uh, the first one i mean of course we had uh, many champions but she's the best one india had have actually So uh can you elaborate something on uh, the Sina's chapter if you if i have to make a statement a sweeping statement i would say that there would have been no gopichand if there was no sina like you can have a vision you can be a leader but your first follower is the most important person and sina was a blind follower okay they fought later or whatever but and arundhati would know more because she was the first non nehwal family chaperon of saina when she was juniors yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. without saina i don't think gopichand would be would have been what he is today uh, so jokingly gopichand gopi i think in the 2017 world championship we were all discussing this and he said yaar mere ko bhi to thoda sa credit de do i said yes you have the credit but that girl blindly followed him like uh, i remember uh, 2006 uh, commonwealth gopi had to given her a physical training program because saina was not supposed to play and aparna got injured and this girl is so mad that she would play her match and still do the same training program and did not bother asking gopi whether she should ease it out like saina the first time saina i met saina when she was 13 and the first statement she gives to the press is we asked her whether you believe that you can beat the seniors and she said inko to maar dungi ye to mehnat hi nahi karte main to din bhar mehnat karti hu yeah, so saina has always been like this Sign was always like that, and that self-belief that girl had, and the ability to follow, 
means Saina was a follower then. Today Saina may be a leader, but then Saina was a follower and she was a perfect follower. And if there was no Saina, I am not sure Gopi could have produced the next batch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on. As you mentioned, uh, many foreign coaches name in your book. Uh, what is your understanding of the difference between Indian coaches and foreign coaches? As you studied the subject and… Uh, As a third person. So, uh, there are a couple of things which is a problem with foreign coaching in India and it is not just related to badminton. We bring foreign coaches to work with our elite. It is the same Prakash Padukone model. We bring them as finishing schools. But the problem in India when a lot of foreign coaches come is they do not understand because uh, in India the badminton foreign coaches are Chinese, Indonesians most of the time who do not understand the culture of parents getting involved. So. Uh, I will say this, uh, I am sure you are, aware, you are aware of it. Flandil Limpel was very unhappy when some of the players decided to not to play a tournament, listening to the family, when Flandil Limpel said, I am the coach, I decide, not the parents. Yeah, every coach has their different yeah. opinions. So, that cultural difference is there. But uh, I will still say we need foreign coaches for doubles, probably not for singles as much, but not at the senior level. Our for, uh, former players are used to now coaching, uh, in, like your husband is a coach now, is travelling with the team. But uh, there is a need for identifying talent, which we still don't have that many coaches. And if we see all the pairs which have been successful were actually made by foreign coaches getting involved. So, starting from Rupesh Sanev, who were brought together by an Indonesian, okay. when Rupesh was actually playing with Diju and he was yeah. asked to shift. Yeah. Same way Chirag Satvik, Dhruv Arjun. So, there is something and uh, Prakash sir, I had mentioned in the book, Prakash sir said that we don't know how to teach doubles because doubles is a completely different. I think badminton is the only unique game where Singles is a different technique and doubles is a different technique. Unlike yeah. tennis and table tennis. So table tennis, okay, there is a rule that you play alternate, but badminton is a technically completely different game. The strokes are different, the movement is different, and we don't have enough coaches at the grassroots who teach us badminton. So we do need foreign coaches for the understanding of the game. But uh, otherwise, I think now, this generation, the generation which has played in the last 10 years, can be really good coaches for our singles players. As you just said that, and because you are a journalist and studied the subject, uh, what is your assessment uh, that we ailing at uh, ailing the sport at the grassroots level? And what more we can do? As you just said that we can hire a few coaches, but what else we can do more? Ailing, so. I have travelled a lot over the years and uh, there's an, uh, I was in England for uh, assignment and uh, I'm very fond of soccer, football. So I went and I was playing in the park because everybody plays on a weekend so I went and started playing in the park. And what I noticed was there was a structure to playing even in a park the basic grassroots coaching structure was the same structure which would be followed till you reach the national team or a club team. I think the biggest challenge for Indian badminton today, even today is the different, different aspects of coaching. So even if there is a commercial coaching aspect to it, there is a certain tactical and technical coaching from the grassroots. So like in education we see, say that if your primary education is, doesn't have the same quality, it's difficult to go beyond. That same problem is in Indian sports, even today in Indian badminton. That by the time you come to the national camp, you spend two years unlearning what you have learned rather than taking the next step to performance. And if we, if BAI can address that issue and reach out, because I still believe that we only have about 15% or 20% of our talent playing badminton reaching the All India level, because we still don't have 
60 percent of states having enough representation at the national level. So, spreading our wings further using your generation of players into identifying talent. Uh, I'll tell a story of her husband uh, who identified a talent from Odisha who had never played a quarterfinals of the nationals and played the Asian Games in one year. And that girl had no clue because she had never had any professional badminton training before coming to the Gopichan Academy. That is the kind of talent we have. Yeah. But we don't have enough political will from the administrators or rather the commercials of the sport do not go to certain cities that our coaches are investing in those cities. True. True. So, uh, what should be, according to you, what should be the ecosystem? I think the cricket model is the perfect model. Okay. You spread yourself thin. You go to places. Like, I think uh, if anybody has seen the movie Dhoni, there's a mention of a TRDO scheme where for the first time, the talent scout when to look for talent rather than people coming to the tournament and then being identified as talent. You have to go hunting for talent. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a personal example. Uh, when I was working for Lakshya, we were identifying talent in shooting and trying to help the Maharashtra government's Krida Prabodhini to identify talent. And uh, we went to places like Bead, Usmanabad, and not many know, uh, I think uh, Abhinav Bindra had tweeted this when uh, a year and a half back when we had a junior national, when Manu Bakar became the world junior champion. Do you know the first world junior champion from India? His name is Nanath Fartade who used to live in a shanty in Bead. We had picked it up in 1999 and he became the world junior champion in 2005. So I think what is ailing Indian sports is we don't go to talent. We pick talent from the talent which is available to us who is coming to play tournaments. And for badminton, considering the cost of playing that sport, yeah. a lot of talent doesn't even turn up. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. Yeah, moving on. In the few pages of your book, you mentioned about BAI. So what is your take on the current administration? <laughs> what I will say is... It's a lot of improvement from where I started. I'll just tell you one story and I will not tell you a name. Uh, he was a long-standing secretary of BAI and, of, and around 2007-8 I was discussing with him, Ki, sir, there's a sponsor, why don't you, I can connect you to him, let the game develop, let the circuit develop. And he turned to me and said, Abhijit bhai, kya karenge? Paisa aega, to koi mera kursi leke jayega. Usse isa, jo chal raha hai, wo chalne do. I think we have come a long way from that. True. The current administrators are more bothered about the players than their chairs. So, okay, it's sports administration, politics, everybody wants that chair. But they also want to, because they know that the sport is now this big, you cannot ignore the performance part of it. So, we have come a long way in the last 15 years. Yes, we have. And I hope we keep going in that direction. Yes, so our boys team won the world championship also. So, it's, yes, we have come a long way. And uh, I am also at the finishing end of my question. So, just uh, for the fun uh, fact, I just want to know who's your all-time favorite player? Indian or... All time favorite, your, you, your favorite player. Taufik. Taufik uh, I won't, I, ca I won't go beyond, behind, but uh, <laughs> yes, in the generation I have seen actually playing Taufik Adar. Acha. So, why Taufik? I still believe that sport is an art. And uh, if you are playing like a robot, mm -hmm. it's no fun to watch. You couldn't you would not know which Taufik wins or which Taufik will lose. And that unpredictability, given the talent that guy had and the kind of entertainer he was on the court, not just with his 
pyrotechnics but basically with his sport so uh, like today uh, all said and done you still enjoy a taizuing playing yeah. even though the chen yufei is winning most of the time true because it's that entertainment aspect of sports that is why in cricket a shane warne is still important a pakistan team is still followed you don't know whether they'll win or not but that's the charm so sport becoming a robotic sport okay. i don't know tofik was more entertaining okay got it and indian indian we'll have to think <laughs> you're thinking no so uh, uh, probably this is a uh, this is an argument which happened between me and sindhu once and uh, she told me like not recently but in about 2014 14 and she said whenever me and saina play you will be in saina's side right <laughs> i said uh, probably yes because i have seen saina from 13 and i have a more probably a emotional connect with her by the time you came in i was a very senior journalist that personal connect was not with you but otherwise i i would root for both of you but when you are playing maybe i'll have slightly soft corner for saina also because now she is a senior so she is an underdog when you are playing but uh, in terms of players i think if a very underrated uh, and uh, who is your favorite player indian favorite <laughs> player i'm just wondering ki which player i can name no Go because on. there are a lot of players who played i like certain certain players style certain players approach to playing but i would love pl- watching diju play diju play yes oh okay very, that's what i'm saying a very underrated player but if you could see a player who and diju and jola was a pair which never which people said was unfit did not move but the kind of gaps that ban could open up when he was placing that shuttle so i can i can always name a player who has achieved but i think i really loved watching diju play and i i was somebody who would sit through all doubles matches even after the singles was over even at the nationals because i loved watching them play i remember one diju's incidents i was uh, when in uh, in our uh, uh, camps we used to have this uh, Uh, uh round robin matches and uh, i was put him as a mixed doubles partner so diju that time he was the number one player and he, D, actually if you guys have seen diju is too tall is very tall he used to you know hit smashes like so deep and I, i i was so scared i was junior and i was so scared to you know just stand near the i was serving <laughs> like my my hands were shivering but yes diju has always been uh, as you said underrated one year really good so uh, who do you think would be the next star in badminton we already have a laksh yes who who is there yes, but uh, if you are looking at somebody to be at a saina sindhu level in women i'll be very frank i don't see anybody i don't see anybody even no at this in this generation of malvika and all but even in the 15 and 17s uh, to a large extent again like i said we are going to struggle basically because we don't have a hands on gopichand anymore yeah. he cannot take care of 500 kids plus we don't have a coach who is equally involved in the life of a player and if you want to transform a player from 15 to 19 into seniors you need a hands on coach you will have to find a new coach who is that hands on uh, in men the same thing is happening like if you see you will, we have over the years we have had four junior no- world number ones and nobody is in the even in the top 15 in that world so that transition is the real challenge yes. and for that transition you need a determined coach and a following pl- follower as a player and today with the game growing it's difficult to find that follower as well that is very true yeah. laksh is the last follower i can see others don't really follow the coaches and till we don't go we don't find that combination of a coach and player 
we are going to struggle finding players who can go to that height i think shrikant also had that this thing of being not being a follower but he believed in gopi and whenever he believed in gopi he followed he had the best years so i think uh, maybe because i work a lot with kids today uh, that is my passion to work with young kids to help them make the transition in life and i believe that it's very simple even when i was a young kid i would think short term it was it was the job of my mentor to think long term and if i was willing to listen i will reap benefits of that that is what will have to happen with this generation who will need to listen to their mentors rather than think about rankings about small tournaments and then we can have a next player emerging so i think we'll have to wait a long time for that i guess thoda <laughs> anyway. i don't know shrikant is the best example no you can turn around a career in 2 years who shrikant But when he came to the Gopichand Academy, everybody said he's finished. Yeah. In two years, he reached where he had. True. A good leader and a good follower can bring results quite fast. That is true. So, can you read uh, one of your fav one passage from your book for our audience? Because I think Sina is my favorite subject of everything. I'll read from between, not something. Uh, and just to understand probably what saina was uh, major international tournaments not only provide you with the opportunity to watch quality players in action but also provide a window to decode what works and what doesn't for top level athletes by chatting with coaches support staff and other experts these water cooler chats as they call in the corporate world outside the official player coach media interactions covers topic ranging from superstitions of players their peculiar habits behind the scenes training methods and ju- sometimes juicy stories about players This i know is, these are my sources okay <laughs> N- not what the media gossip says no <laughs> <laughs> so during one one such chat at the india open the discussion veered towards the question which of the indian players could endure the high adrenaline levels during crunch matches sustaining those levels can be extremely tiresome and there have been many instances when players oscillate between the brilliant and the ordinary in matches as as the boost in the heart rate increased blood pressure and higher level of muscle function can quickly drain the body this is why it becomes important for players to direct and control the flow of this energy so as to maintain the level of their performance the general consensus in that chat was that while most indian players have learned the art of playing at their best when in a flow they cannot summon that adrenaline rush when they need it the most and even if they do do manage to get a high for some period sustaining it throughout the tournament and using it to dominate or intimidate opponents doesn't come naturally to them but just when everyone about to disperse and get on with their jobs as another top indian player was about to take the court gopichand quipped saina was different she had the adrenaline practice the first session of the day the second session of the day the next day the next week the next tournament great well in spite being the part of this uh, entire journey of course except the history which you covered in the first few chapter uh, you've written in the book i found this book a worthy of a read so that would be my review and uh, now i can see i i think before going you should tell one gopichand story of yourself no what <laughs> my gopichand see i was not prepared for this <laughs> and uh, i you want my gopichand story yeah. from my side the, yeah so like i said Okay, not a control freak Gopichand, but the involved Gopichand. But uh, yeah, okay. Maybe I will answer, but when I'm on the chair. Today you are the one. Today. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, see, I, as he said, I am the first uh, student of his academy. Before um, he picked me when I was uh, playing, I was under sixteen. and uh, playing my first uh, junior nationals in uh, calicut so he came my father was there with me so he came and uh, he said 
that time Gopi Chand, he was my hero, you know, uh, just uh, winning the All England and yeah, so he, he came and he said, uh, tomorrow morning can you come at 4.30? Yes. I was like, okay, <laughs> it's him, we were there, we were waiting for him, he came and uh, he said that uh, I am starting an academy, can you join? We were like, great, Matlab, itna acha opportunity, yes, we would definitely uh, join. And I was very happy. Uh, then, we, I, then we went to academy and my journey in the academy started. So, uh, then I slowly, uh, I was uh, India number one, me and Saina, most of the time we were playing finals in the juniors. Uh, then uh, I was uh, in the national camp and then I, uh, I saw uh, how tough he was. Uh, we used to give, he used to take our phones uh, when uh, we had to submit our phones around 8 o'clock after dinner and we used to get our phones back by after session that is around 12.30 and then by 12.30 to 8 o'clock we used to have our phone so it's like you call anybody, you call your parents that time again submit your phone. So that much he was involved in our lives and which actually uh, made us what we are today. So full credit goes to him and uh, uh, I mean he's one of the best thing I have in my life. So, yeah, that is from my side. So, yeah, that, that's from me. And But now I can see all the eager minds are waiting to ask questions. We will now open Many. the discussion for questions. If anyone amongst you has any question, it's the best time to shoot, shoot it up to these two ace shuttlers. So, just go ahead. Hello, my name is Sherish Rangole. Uh, I have been a sports buff basically and a badminton enthusiast. I started playing almost uh, 50 years before. I am no great player, I am one of those uh, danda players. Uh, I just want to have your uh, take. You have already said part of it that Gopi Chand became Gopi Chand because of Saina and probably uh, Sindhu also. I just add two more names to that. Gopi Chand became Gopi Chand because of Saina and Usharani and uh, Sindhu and Ramana. And bec unless the parents push the children hard, they are not coming up. And when you said that there is nobody coming up in uh, top 10, 20 in the next, maybe, and I agree with you completely. I follow badminton almost to the hilt. So nobody is coming. So we need to look for the parents basically and not the children. You take. It's a very it's a subject very close to my heart because I do a lot of kids counselling and uh, me and Aparna Popat actually had started taking sessions of how the parent should be of a sports person like what 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 kind of roles parents should play in, uh, in the career journey uh, when we are speaking of Usharani and Ramana yes they were pushy parents but there is a thin line between pushy parents and overbearing parents. Luckily, they were not. Uh, Arundhati is here and Arundhati would know that there were equally or probably like there's an incident I didn't write in the book uh, probably because it was negative in a sense, not a negative for Saina, but uh, there was a camp going on in 2006 uh, at the at the Gachibawli Stadium where Saina had played came out and we were all sitting and I was the only journalist so I, I used to sit with the players only because there was no media area or anything because I was the only one there I used to be the only one there and Saina walks out 2006 which means Saina was 16 and uh, Trupti Murgunde was practicing inside and Saina randomly turns to us and says that girl had that kind of talent uh, I think Rituparna Das was extremely talented. Gopi picked her as a 14 year old because she was extremely talented. But I think uh, while Usharani was extremely pushy, 
she never interfered in the badminton aspects of saina she was a pushy mother who would make her work hard and everything she did not think that she became a coach by being with saina today the biggest challenge is the parents trying to become coaches of the coaches very true go is job mother is to push gopi is to teach so yeah so so uh, i i work with a lot of players uh, not to boast as such but uh, uh, rahi sarnobat apurvi chandela uh, pooja rani who became who, all these who have been olympians i have been involved in their careers since they were under 15 uh, my job was to plan the career development with the coaches so even though we speak about gopi and saina and usha rani a kiran or a siyadat are equally important it's the team that works gopi alone does not work is the physio works is the trainer working is the assistant coach who is feeding the players getting them to know so a gopi is a strict guy you can't go up to gopi and talk but you talk to a siyadat siyadat goes tells gopi what is going on in the player's mind then it is sorted out it's a team work it's a team effort and parents have a big role to play as motivators as somebody who is pushing the kid but today i'm sorry but a lot of parents think that they are the decision makers the coaches are always the decision makers when to play when not to play uh, the biggest controversy about gopi chand and all the big controversies about gopi chand over the years have been where parents thought that they, he should have taken another decision for his child for the child and not because the player had a problem with the with the coach so i think yes parents have a huge role to play but parents role is to motivate guide and push and not get into coaching abhi ji uh, i'm kaushik bhattacharya from hitwad newspaper um, as a journalist what do you think that uh, where do you see indian badminton after 10 years because as already uh, you mentioned that uh, um, system driven um, uh, coaching is going on in gopichand academy now which was earlier it was uh, something different so um, as a journalist i want to ask because um, it is uh, uh, we can uh, see the sports or any ang- uh, anything in different angles so what do you think what, what will happen after 10 years and uh, ad- adding the same um, apart from gopichand academy where is indian badminton all said and done indian badminton has has crossed that gravitational force part now it can function on its own because given the way it has grown now automatically more and more people want to play so when i was like in 2004 5 6 when no, these guys were still not the internationals uh, i can tell you that a lot of players when they used to go for international tournaments because that time you went to international tournaments only because you were selected in the indian team uh, there were players who were india number 1 who would have a late brunch because breakfast used to be on the house in the hotels save the money for lunch dinner and come back shopping today even players going at their own cost are very particular about how they build their day because they have to play a match so that uh, change that it's my career has come in so in that sense you will have a bunch of players coming back to back you may not get a saina or a sindhu but you will still have 10 men singles player in the top 100 so you will still be an indonesia you will still be a malaysia who after lee chong we probably has a lee ji zia but nobody but in team it's still formidable because you have a bunch of players playing will we keep winning an olympic medal i don't know because you need an individual there who is going to win a medal but as a on the international circuit some indian would be winning somewhere a team will be reaching the quarter finals because we have reached that stage collectively now and uh, today there are so many academies all across this country that somewhere a sankar 
द करंट वर्ल्ड ज्युनियर सिल्वर मेडलिस्ट इज फ्रॉम चेन्नई ही इज नॉट फ्रॉम अ गोपीचंद अकॅडमी ऑर अ पुलेला गोपीचंद ऑर अ प्रकाश पदुकोण अकॅडमी सो द कोचेस देर आर कोचेस हू आर इन्व्हेस्टिंग बिकॉज नाव दे सी इट ॲज अ करिअर फॉर दम सेल्स फुल टाईम कोचिंग महाराष्ट्र इज नॉट देअर येट बिकॉज वी स्टील डोंट हॅव अकॅडमीज हु आर फुल फ्लेज्ड अकॅडमीज वी स्टील हॅव कोचेस हायरिंग कोर्ट्स अँड कोचिंग सो महाराष्ट्र इज लॅगिंग बिहाइंड बिकॉज ऑफ दॅट बट डाऊन साऊथ आय थिंक हैदराबाद हॅज सम टेन अकॅडमीज नाव विथ फिफ्टीन कोर्ट्स बँगलोर हॅज सम सेवन एट अकॅडमीज चेन्नई हॅज सिक्स अकॅडमीज सो द गेम टेन इयर्स डाऊन द लाईन विल बी इक्वली पॉप्युलर वेदर यू फाईंड अ सायना ऑर अ सिंधू ऑर अ श्रीकांत इज द चॅलेंज yeah so i have a question about uh, you know just as you said badminton was just before gopichan which sport do you think is at that annual right now which is going to be the next 10 years we'll see a badminton happening in another sport what what do you think the grassroots table tennis is one sport which has a lot of talent and the system is coming up uh, whether it will become as popular i am not sure for two reasons commercially again table tennis is not a tv sport it's very difficult to, like badminton hasn't grown like tennis because it's not a tv sport tv still cannot tell you what happens on a badminton court and yeah the tv tv cannot show you the nuances of that sport like cricket or tennis where it's a compact sport tennis is you play from the baseline you play a top spin you there are some 20 odd strokes that a badminton player plays even on the net dribbles and the television does not show you also because there is not enough time like uh, i have been involved in this and i fight with uh, a lot of officials that by the time a good point is shown in a replay the next point has started the television only cuts you to the last winning shot that is not how a sport grows commercially plus the way the badminton asos the world badminton federation wants the matches to be run there is no breaks in between for commercials so if the television is not going to make money why are they going to invest in showing that sport the two aspects like the sport grows if television invests so that is where badminton is struggling same is going to happen with table tennis shorter games but they have tried to change with 11 point format five games there is a break but in in terms of performance i i think table tennis can grow i've got a question for you from on twitter dm from somebody who uh, saw your tweet and uh, asked me to ask you this uh, what do you think would be your advice to budding sports journalists in india and if they want to really cover international events now as sports journalists uh, now that you said that you are by accident a sports journalist but if somebody wants to do it by design so what do you suggest those budding sports journalists don't think of covering international sports when you start uh, maybe i am a bit old school but uh, i could write this book because i saw these kids playing from under 13 under 15 level today a lot of people want to cover sport and it's i don't know maybe it's the way i look at it but we are star driven coverage uh, uh, it's a story i'll tell you but uh, I, i won't tell you a name uh, we were covering the nationals in goa and because it was goa about 6 7 journalists had come to cover the nationals uh, the <laughs> and uh, a journalist walked up to me and said यार गोवा घूमने जाना है एंड आई हैड अ व्हीकल देन सो जैसे सैड हमको घूमने जाना है सैड नहीं यार मेरे को ये मैच देखना है एंड द जर्नलिस्ट सैड यार हम लोगों का तो कोर्ट्स कॉपी हो गया है ना चलो जाते हैं एंड देर वॉज अ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी इज दैट हैपन इन दैट मैच द नेक्स्ट इन इन दैट डे इन अ डबल्स मैच अक्षय एंड जिष्णु लॉस टू रुपेश एंड सनेव एंड इट वॉज अ बिग कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल मैच एंड आई एंड अप राइटिंग अबाउट इट एंड द technical mistakes that the umpire made and then the journalist has to so i think why we are not covering a lot of sports probably today is yes the media industry in a way which is internet driven wants to only write about the stars which can be see which which are searched on google so we are only writing about those stars 
because we are google driven journalism now but if you really want to become a sports journalist i think you need to understand sports so when we say that the players don't talk to us this is a complaint that a lot of guys make that the players don't talk to journalists is because a lot of times we cannot ask them questions related to their sport if we are going to discuss sports with them i feel even the top players are willing to discuss the sport they are not interested in discussing controversy but they are very very interested in still discussing the performance the sport what went wrong what went right so if you really want to become a sports journalist invest in the sport not a sports person understand learn the game i still believe that a journalist should know the rules of the sport as well as the coach or the umpire and then only you can be critical about writing something so if you want to become a good journalist invest in the sport rather than in the stars best moment according to you in indian badminton history and why thomas cup any day <laughs> and what about saina winning in london olympics uh, sindhu in 2016 and sindhu winning in uh, world championship Uh, simply put a team championship win shows the overall growth of a sport an individual victory is an individual victory so for me thomas cup is always going to be the bigger one. i start with an apology just i just want to rattle the cage probably foreign coaches you mentioned from the media from the newspaper we all know tan kim her came gone uh, mulya handeo came gone flandi limpele came gone Kim Chi Hyun came, gone, and from your book, which I didn't know, Bhaskar Babu also left. That was an information to me. I do understand. With Gopi Chand, it is my way or highway. Don't you think? I now make a statement. Don't you think that this my way or highway has costed some good advice, some good things from these foreign coaches? I mean, I just take one example: Mulya Handeo. The year he came in. we had so many bwf series titles the fellow left why this is happening your take yes uh, uh, like i said uh, my way or highway is true and we we would have lost not just coaches but even players to a s- extent but that's that is how things are like if you are running a business uh, if you are a ceo of a company there would be certain people whose working you would like certain people whose working you would not like you would back some players you would back some individuals and you will not back some individuals so that's that's the tragedy of scaling up uh, like i said the first batch of gopichand academy were treated equally as the as the numbers grew it didn't happen that way uh, bhaskar babu was a tragedy of politics and to a large extent bhaskar babu's own doings i won't get into the details much <laughs> i say that because i played with bhaskar babu yeah no so bhaskar babu is an excellent coach i am not saying i am not getting into the coaching part of bhaskar babu bhaskar babu is an excellent coach but it was the political situation which was not correct during that period and it it went the way it went uh, so it's not my place to talk about their personal though i know them because it's for them to speak about it both of them but uh, with foreign coaches yes there have been certain coaches whose working didn't gel with gopi there are certain coaches who wanted to continue but could not continue because the interference of the sports authority of india so uh, we need to understand this that the coaches the foreign coaches are not hired by bai or gopichand they are hired by sports authority of india and there are certain budgetary constraints so when tan kim her left i can say this because most of it is in public domain he wanted an extension till 2024 when japan offered him a job and he wanted a certain rise a raise which the sports authority of india refused to give uh, bai today is strong so when kim came when park came for almost 4 months bai paid their salary because their contracts were not signed on time so there are a lot of aspects why coaches leave also the europeans 
and the top countries pay a lot more to indian coaches than what we pay uh, to the foreign coaches than what we pay so it's also a stepping stone for these coaches a lot of time that you you come to a certain level you bring team indian players to a certain level and then you are automatically called by some bigger nation and i i will give one thing to those foreign coaches they are extremely professional they they take take up two three players as project they get them to their best and then they raise the bar so um, i think today uh, i won't quote the figures but the whole discussion going on is mathasbo has asked so much money that they are not sure whether they want to continue with mathasbo <laughs> so it there are a lot of factors why these coaches have left mulio handio left his brother in law heriawan left immediately Mulio Handeo wanted to be closer home. Yeah. So there are a lot of factors. Like uh, Bo's point is the same thing. He doesn't want to stay in Hyderabad full time. Mathias Bo doesn't want to stay in Hyderabad full time. So there are a lot of contractual issues in between. Not talking to the media was a rule. So for a foreign coach to speak to the media, they had to take written permission from Sports Authority of India. which didn't go down well with a lot of coaches so uh, first and foremost thank you so much for a very informative session uh, my name is mayank and i'm an educator by profession and that's why i have a very offbeat question to you so because you have been scouting talent uh, observing these people in their element outside their element what i actually wanted to know was uh, when you are scouting talent per se how and what character traits do you observe which lead you to believe that this per- person needs training and not with a finishing school but with a grassroots level teaching they can be uh, a very big talent and they can make a good name for themselves and the country there are different schools of thoughts okay in india we believe in the skill school of thought so we look at the skill and we go and pick players the chinese model is completely ulta which the maharashtra government tried in 99 where you go by physical parameters you go by a lot of testing and find and figure out the perfect body for a particular sport and then t- start teaching them skills the european model mixes a lot where their sports science is a lot more advanced but i still think today we have a lot of sports person talented but they do not win because we do not take care of the physical parameters so when i am looking at talent i am always looking at the gene pool as well understanding the background of the parents the physicality of parents because you may be a talented player today but you may not reach a certain height if i am looking for an olympian or that level of talent so you need to look at a lot of aspects so in a way i i categorize it in five categories one is skill one is physical strength street star- smartness because you may be a player but you need to be very very intelligent in reading situations fourth is determination and i remember bam sir once telling me if you have your street smartness and determination the other two you can fight for but if you lack determination all the other three don't matter so i think when i look for talent i see determination i need one of the two street smartness or determination the rest is part of the player because when you are coming to play you are either physically strong or you are skillful but if you lack one of these two qualities you don't have both street smartness and determination i don't think you can become a big player you can have a vision be a leader but you are nothing without your first diligent follower be right back i'm going to go and check on my first instagram follower but jokes apart what an interesting session and what an interesting journey about the rise and rise of indian badminton and the man behind it none other than pulela gopichand I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say it's been very enlightening, insightful and thought provoking. Thank you Abhijit and Arundhati for engaging us with your views and thank you dear readers for asking such intriguing questions and always being learners here at VLF. Pablo Picasso once said, painting is just another way of keeping a diary. Today we have with us very talented Vanshika Okande, a 12th grade student from Alag Angel community who is going to share an excerpt from her diary in the form of a very beautiful and unique painting. I would like to invite Vanshika and Shirish Rangole sir 
avid reader, badminton enthusiast who has held top management in NTPC and Balco and presently resides in Nagpur to present this thoughtful token to our author. This painting was conceptualized and made especially for our author. With his work on fleek, he carries a chill vibe within a body of unmatched passion, with his down-to-earth persona and he always knows the right thing to do. I would now like to call upon our very own Mr. Sachin Jagirdar, Secretary VLF, to address our dear readers and present the closing remark and vote of thanks. Thank you, Vishmay. Arundhati, it was your chance to grill him. You let him go? <laughs> She was telling me uh, that, you know, he was a very strict journalist, you know, he used to probe the players during his interaction. Your coaches ever told you not to speak to this guy, don't ask, answer his questions when the team elections were happening? No, 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 no. Definitely not. At least, as far as I know, no. You, you wanted <laughs> to hear it from her officially. <laughs> <laughs> so I have enough others to tell me that, yes, we were told. Oh. <laughs> All right. No comment. <laughs> so, uh, we were very apprehensive to host this session on uh, Monday evening, but thank you all for joining in. And uh, we understand that Monday is a little tough to, you know, attend uh, any such kind of events in the evening especially. Uh, now, we are coming uh, pretty close to the uh, Lit Fest, which is happening in February, just under three months left. So, I request all of you to spread the word. Please join us, join the bandwagon. Uh, contribute, volunteer um, in whatever uh, capacity that you can. Uh, in the last session I announced that uh, we recently got another sponsor. Uh, we have all the logos here but uh, that sponsor's logo is still not here. It's uh, called Inventus I mentioned. The another uh, uh, the group that has joined us is uh, Toastmasters International uh, but I don't see that stall outside today. Uh, so they are also with us. Uh, yeah, that reminds me that we'll be having a lot of stalls uh, in the festival. So if you know anyone which is uh, relevant to the festival, please reach out to us. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, you know, making the space available for the stall in those two days. Uh, as this was an exception and I'm very afraid, mostly this is going to be another exception in December. Uh, it, the dates are not final yet. The book is on science from sports. Now we'll move to the science in the month of December. Uh, she's coming from Switzerland. Uh, she's based in Geneva. Uh, she'll be coming here. She's in India during December. She's promised to be here, but the date is not yet frozen. Mostly 16th or 17th. So either Friday or a Saturday. Uh, definitely not a Monday. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed. We are insisting for a Saturday, but I, it looks very tough. Uh, Dr. Rajana Sharma, she will be joining us uh, in December. Uh, so please mark your pencil, mark your calendars for now. And uh, follow us on all our media platforms to know the exact date. It will be on the same time, same place. Uh, looking forward to meet you all again on the next coming one. Uh, now coming to the buying of these books today. Uh, from the VLF, we have always been insisting to buy the books. And we have an offer that you cannot refuse. The book is available for only two, 250 rupees today. So I want all the copies to be sold. <laughs> Sorry? You have told me before. <laughs> so you can buy a few more. <laughs> and please uh, give them to your fellow badminton players. <laughs> right. Thank you and see you again. Thank you, SJ. Thank you, Abhijit and Arundhati for taking us a little closer to this lovely sport. And a huge thank you to all the badminton players, aspiring shuttlers, coaches, sports journalists, lovers and enthusiasts over here for their constant support and encouragement. With a hope that we continue to rise, in, rise further in the world of badminton, future of Indian shuttle is in safe hands. Readers, I know you all enjoyed this session. Do feel free to interact with the author and buy his brand new book, The Gopichan Factor, The Rise and Rise of Indian Badminton, right outside this room. And don't forget the discount, especially curated for our readers here at VLF. Also, Vijaya Ji's book is also available for sale. Please feel free to buy that book also and encourage our local uh, author community. So go grab your copy for that autograph right away. This is me, Vismarao, signing off until next time. Thank you so much. Yeah.